Uh, okay, I'm, uh, I'm sitting over here because we're trying not to have the screen appear on the camera, which is recording, as you can see, in the upper right-hand corner. Um, we are doing webcasting. We've been doing this as a trial since uh, the May meeting. Um, we, we ran one meeting over the summer, July 17th, uh, which was attended by international people. I say that just because a webcast should be international, so this one was. Um, we had, uh, uh, Eckhart was in Germany, and Bill was in Spain, and we had some Canadian people, and we had some American people, and some people in America who weren't American people, but everybody was on it. We had about, I think, 30 people, so it was a good good uh, trial. We, we are trying this. It's a, it's a uh, learning experience, so this may do something weird, and if it does, I'll try to fix it while we're talking today. Um, uh, the second meeting was August 7th. I'm sorry I didn't uh, get to have that one. I was ill that day, and then for about a week around it. Um, we're going we're gonna to keep trying to do these. Um, uh, I'll cover some of that content today um, uh, about journaling and whatever. Um, our last meeting used Join Me. Some of us have used go to webinar, go to meeting. Some of us have used go to webinar, go to meetings. Yeah, if I'm if I trail off back there, just wave at me that you can't hear me, and I'll uh, speak up a little. Uh, Deborah, especially, I'm going to count on you. Thank you. Um, so we're trying different software, but right now we're using Zoom, and uh, uh, Zoom seems to be the easiest to for everybody to sort of use uh, without 86 tech people standing around. And helping. Uh, just give a quick definition of Zoom. Uh, Zoom is the little blue um, icon that's down here. It's software. And uh, when you go to our calendar, or if you get a message from George in, a, in the uh, e-blast that he sends, it'll say, click on this link, and then it'll take you to Zoom. And Zoom is just a, uh, it's a, it's a web-based program that lets you sign in to our, our um, uh, meeting. And what you would see is what I'm broadcasting here, which right now is just my face. And in a little while, we're gonna share this, we're gonna, and we're, I'm sharing the screen as well. So you would see what you're seeing here on the screen uh, on your computer at home. And what's Join Me? Join Me is the same kind of software. It's a different provider. It's like Apple and Microsoft and Google. You know, everybody has their own little Thing. So join me is one, go to meeting is one, Zoom is one, Blue Jeans is one. They're just different apps. And you don't have to worry about which app to use, we'll tell you. Because the app is whichever one we give you a link for. Okay. But it's pretty good if you're traveling or if you if you want to attend a meeting. We're not, I think we're going to try and do it every meeting, but sometimes we won't. Because uh, we don't know how to connect yet the outside speakers in, you know. Because the outside speaker comes in over Skype or FaceTime. That's a whole bunch of questions. Um, a couple of, couple of things about the website. For those of you who go to our website, maplesmug.com, uh, it has evolved over the summer. Uh, I've made some changes to it. John continues to post content on it as well. Um, I moved all the menus that used to be on the side that were hard to find to the top. So now when you go to our website and you want to see classes or um, member posts or uh, how do I do that, some of those other content, uh, they're all at the top. I'll show you that uh, here. Um, if I make these icons a little bit smaller, I won't be able to see it. Um, so here's our website. That's maplesmug.com. And here are the various um, uh, links. So member post, discussion group, membership, calendar, classes, class notes. Uh, all of our class notes are here. So anybody who missed class notes from last time, from last year, you can go to our class, class notes from last year and get them and download them and catch up. Uh, the same thing for the prior, prior years. How do I do that? We've been trying to post, I've been trying to post some of the questions that I think are um, relevant and not um, time sensitive. So for example, how do I add the NMUG calendar to my Mac or 
uh, my eye device. If you click this link, it takes you to a set of descriptions on how to do that. And, by, and so forth and so on. How do I sign up for notebook tutorials? Um, on, the, on the Mac, how do I export photos and maintain the original creation date? We all have problems with that. So, so this is just a, sh a relatively contained list. Uh, it is by, uh, it is alphabetical. So if you say, how do I, um, and of course the first one I look at here is, it, it actually is not alphabetical. I'll fix it. Uh, how do I get around, how do I use Apple, and how do I store? It should be, how do I store and how do I use? Um, so anyway, how do I check my blood pressure on my Apple Watch? Who got an Apple Watch? New Apple Watch? How do I check my blood pressure? You can click right there and find that out. How do I set an alarm on my Apple Watch? So I'm trying to post the things that are not uh, uh, short, short-term kinds of kinds of issues uh, that right. you might not need right this minute, but that you'll get later on. Morning. I've combined all the. Hold on a second. I've combined all the meeting materials in one place now because we're not doing meetings on Mondays that have topics. I just put everything into meeting materials, and this is. This is a, a summary of all the videos. Um, I think it goes back through 2015 or 2013 or something. Uh, but basically, if you miss a meeting, uh, this is being recorded. It's a webcast. And if you missed a meeting, you can get it here. And then you just click on this, and you'll see a video of what we're recording. This is what this, what's, uh, what's being recorded on the meeting. Uh, Marilyn, you had a question? Uh, if you just mentioned that, on. Um some of the iOS devices, you need to tap on the three lines in order to get those. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, the display. I'll, sh I'll show you this when I switch over to the to okay. the iPhones and iPads. Uh, on a, on an iPhone or iPad, all these things appear as three little lines off to the right, and these things will appear at the bottom, wherever the bottom is. Uh, they'll appear at the bottom. Uh, as lines as well. And almost all of our pages have comment places, so you can post comments. And I get an email when that happens, and then we try to respond to you. So the, the website is evolving, it's coming along. I added a discussion group link here. So if you now are interested in the discussion group, it takes you right to uh, the Yahoo group. If, you're a, if you have an account, it lets you sign in. If you don't have an account, it takes you to the Join Me for the Yahoo discussion group. So all of that is on is in one place now on the on the website. So that's just an overview. I didn't want to spend a lot of time on it, but uh, give you a second. Morning, yes. on that site, uh, maybe what, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Mitch, uh, on that site, what can non-members see? Almost all that. They can get into almost all that. Yep. But there's no link that comes live on that site with the Zoom connection. Uh, there, there is on the. Um, There is on the right side. The right side is, is for example, this meeting is posted here. Mm -hmm. Mug returns, and it will show you, if you click that link, it shows you the posting, and it shows you how to get into Zoom. So if you wanted to attend this meeting by webcast, you would click the right-hand side where it says, we return September 4th. You would click this link for Zoom, and it would take you to the Zoom on the website, and, uh, on, the, uh, browser, on your browser. And a non-member can do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So and then the other things that are here, the discussion group link has been added. So as I change things, they're usually listed on the right. Uh, quite the newsletter subscription is here. You can update your membership information here by clicking here. Um, and uh, joining the discussion group is also down at the bottom. And the purpose of the membership is, what do you get if you get it? You can't participate in the discussion group without being a member. You can't take classes at the reduced rate without being a member. You can't, um, uh, you, you, as a member, you can join no Boom tutorials at a discounted rate. Um, uh, I guess those are the three, three big ones, the okay. discussion group and and, uh, Plus, take control books. Take control books. Yeah, we have some, several discount programs that, that you can participate in. Um, there's, a, there's been a big discussion about do we keep the classes 
the class notes private or not, but um, the feeling has been we just leave it open. It's up to the board to decide those kinds of questions. Okay, so um, I got some questions. Are there other questions from the audience before we go on? Somebody said earlier there was a question. Is there an easy way to join Can two? Can I have your name, please? Oh, Jim. Jim. And is there an easy way to join two photo libraries? Since I've been a member, which is, I think this is my sixth year or fifth year, um, people have asked me many times, uh, you know, I want to write my memoirs. I want to write a, a, a history for my grandkids so that they know what we went through back in the olden days, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, when life wasn't the way it is today, uh, or the way it's going to be in 20 years. Um, so, so there are a couple couple places I recommend uh, people going to. Um, I think everybody knows about StoryCorps. Is that familiar familiar word to you, StoryCorps? Uh, StoryCorps is a is a um, a volunteer effort that uh, has been, has been around for a while. It's an, actually an app called StoryCorps app. S T O R Y C O R P S. Just the way it's written on the screen. And it's to capture the narratives of veterans from the prior wars. Um, you know, everybody's focused on the current wars, but there's lots of people who are getting up in years who, who you know, would, it would be beneficial if we had their narratives. And there, there's a library. They're actually now in the Library of Congress. Um, and you can contribute your own stories there. And there are mobile vans that go around to various places to capture those stories. Um, for things like writing your memoirs and, and uh, letters to your family and so forth and so on. Uh, there are lots of tools that we have available. A, one that I didn't put on here that I will put on here right now um, is uh, just screen recording. Uh, 
with the new technologies, with either the iPad or the iPhone or your MacBook Pro, you can sit in front of the camera that's that little green dot that, that I'm pointing to, and you can record your story, and you get video, and you get um, uh, audio, and it's a recording that goes onto your device, and then you can ship it around, and you can edit it, and you can do all sorts of things with it. So, so that's a, a very simple one, very easy one. Uh, the other ones that are that are um, uh, Apple provided are Notes and Pages. Um, a lot of people use Notes for recording their their memoirs. There is now an audio and video recording capability for, for both of these uh, pieces of software. Um, they're the easiest tools that you can use for recording your memoirs, putting them in a certain way. You can put them in folders. You can organize them in any, any way you, you like. Uh, I use pages for mine uh, because then I can capture pictures and movies and soundtracks and whatever else I want. I can lump it all together. So, so journaling for me meant how do I keep a journal? Um, Evernote and Day One are both, um, I've used both of them, I, ha I use both of them now. I love Day One. Day One's a free program, uh, unless you want to do things like sync it across your devices, do other things. Um, I don't know if I have it here. Here's Day One, it's a little, the little blue guy down at the bottom. It opens up, lets you create a new journal, and then every day it will remind you to make journal entries and it lets you uh, add pictures and, and it will if you have pictures it puts the pictures in the right day and the right time so you sort of keep a chronological uh, a chronological journal of yourself I think for yourself Evernote is also free again unless you want to do things like syncing across devices uh, but uh, uh, very good and then it lets you then post to a website and you can post to Blogspot or some of the other website uh, changes. So um, just a, a very quick uh, summary. If anybody's got questions about that stuff, by all means email me and I'll be happy to uh, work with you or take you through what I know about them. I've used them for many years um, and they're, they're interesting. Um, any questions about that before I go on? Why are you giving up if you download one of these free apps? What are you giving up? Uh, do they store your photos or? Uh, yeah, you, it, uh, Sorry, it depends if you. It depends if you put them on their cloud, their cloud, or your cloud. You have all the same issues about privacy that you'd have anywhere. So you have to read it, make sure you want to do what they, you know, what they offer you basically. Uh, with Evernote, uh, Evernote can can leave it on your device, so it's just your own or they'll put it on their cloud, and then it's available on other devices. And if you put it on the web, then it's available in the, on the web. So you have all those kinds of, of issues. Sure. Thank you. Um, OK, uh, the second question was, uh, in Safari on Max, is there a way to place a new tab icon at the left side of the bar, toolbar? Um, now, um, somewhere here is my little uh, my little guy, and let me move this so we can see what I'm talking about. And let me move this guy, because we don't need to see my face, right? So the question is, you know, in Safari, Safari is our web browser, right? Uh, there's this little plus over here, which is how you make a new page. And Don wants to move that to the right, to the left. Well, you can't do that. That Apple puts it there, and other browsers put them, they'll have their, their search bar at the top, and then they'll put their little plus on the right. Um, but you can do two things. First of all, you can move these tabs around anytime you want, right? I can move this guy or that guy. Those are my open tabs, right? Everybody knows that? So any, anytime I want to move a tab, I can just move a tab. I just click it, hold it, and move it. And these are pinned tabs, right? So for example, here is the end mode pinned tab. And how do you make a pinned tab? You hold down the, uh, your two fingers on your trackpad or your right click on your mouse, and then you get pinned tab. Now I can't pin this tab because it's a favorites, and favorites is the, 
list of favorites, right? But if I had an open tab, if I open this what's new in the Mac, for example, it's going to give me a new tab here. And if I right click it, I can pin tab it. And then it becomes a tab right here. Now I can take that thing and I can move it wherever I want. So when I pin a tab, I can move it wherever I want. So open tabs I can move just by dragging and dropping, right? And pin tabs I can move the same way <coughs> just by dragging and dropping. Marty? Carl, uh, is, can you change the icon on the pin tabs? Can you change the icons? Yeah. Not that I know. Okay. But that icon is, is subject related. So here's the one that looks like M mode. And it, that captures the, when I open M mode, that captures the, um, I forget the name now, but every website has a, an icon that appears sometimes in the lower, in the, in the left hand corner there, not where the reader thing is, but it usually appears here. And that is what gets captured here. So Zoom looks like that when you open Zoom. And uh, Google Calendar looks like that. And, and it will be, it'll appear, it's, in, it's embedded in the website, so that's what Okay, well the reason I have is you got like four, five, five of them are exactly the same. You can't tell what they are, right? Well, I can tell what they are by dragging my cursor up there. Yeah. And it tells me what they are. The reason they're there is for you, for today. Because I have these things I want to demonstrate, and I've prearranged them to be here. So this when I want to show you computer. Catalina, this I show you. This is so long a computer. Not an iPad. This is a computer. I'm on my computer. But it's only for the computer. Uh, yes, that's right. Don. Uh, so the difference between a pin tab and a bookmark is if you click on one of the pin ones, it opens a new tab, whereas a bookmark would replace whatever you're presently looking at. Is that right? Um, yeah, if I if I had a, if I opened a bookmark here, it would replace. If I was in if I was here where I am now, it would replace the content. Right. Sure. Yeah. But the pin just opens. Pin tabs that. always open where where I was. Right. So if I go to Zoom. Here's my Zoom. If I go to Apple, it's my whatever. Martin, Martin, sure. This is Jerry. Uh, I think not. This is really a question. Are, aren't the pen tabs open all the time? Um, I, I don't know the answer to that. May, that may be true. I think I think they are, but I, I, I'm positive about that. I don't know. I don't know that this is an open tab all the time. I'm not sure. I, I, that may be true. Marty. Jim. Jim. Uh, the pin tab is reversible. Can you expand it? Can you expand a pin tab? Oh, sure. When you when you click it, um, I realize the website comes up when you click it, but can you uh, reverse that? Because if I, you if might I pin it, then I get it out here. Okay. Right. If I pin it, then I get it back here. Okay. Yeah. When it, you have to open it. Do it. Sure. Just a comment, this pinning and unpinning of tabs also works in Finder and most most of the applications when you have tab capability, you can pin things that you want so that they're there always, but they're over the, on the left. Now, and a workaround, because I think your question is, I don't like it over here because I'm a left-handed guy and I always use my mouse over here. You can do Command T and make a new tab. So Command T, I could use my left hand to do Command T if I'm using my mouse on the left. I'm inferring that that was the source of your question, but I don't, I don't know. It will it'll still show up on the right hand side. It still shows up on the right, but Command T at least <coughs> gives you the way to open it without having to move your cursor to the right. Um, okay, in Maps, I'm going to save this question until we get to the iOS device, so remind me if I don't remember to go back to it. Um, Jim had a question about, um, I attempted to delete the summer meetings of Enmo that showed in my calendar, but he gets a message that says you're deleting 
You're deleting one or more events containing attachments. Are you sure you want to continue? What attachments? Uh, Jim, I don't know what attachments. <laughs> <laughs> there are no attachments to me. Um, here's the calendar, and here's uh, the Zoom meeting. Zoom meeting doesn't have attachments. All it has is a link, right? Okay. And the way I delete you, this. I, so you're on July 17th? Yep. All right, can, can you go to some place that has a, an NMUG meeting that is scheduled, but is scheduled because it's there for all the meetings, that, but we didn't really have a meeting and attempted to delete it? Oh. Okay, so that was what I was doing. I was, oh, oh, oh. I was attempting to delete the meetings we did not have, I don't know, yeah, So if you had, it, that, that's true, for, for example, July 24th, on the original calendar would have the end month meeting. Right. And that's a repeated meeting. Right. Sure. Yeah. So when I perfect. attempted to delete that, uh, then I got this. It tells you there's a whole bunch of me a message. Yeah. If you're deleting the whole series. So if I attempt to delete it, would it eliminate the calendars for it the all entries for the whole calendar? Yeah. Well, you have to do them one at a time. Do them one at a time. It's okay. because it's because you can't delete from a subscribe account. Oh. Right? Only the administrator can do that. Ooh. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so um, let's talk about the new the new operating system. What we're looking at here is the new operating system. Um, this is uh, Catalina. I've been running Catalina for about two months. Uh, the Catalina, the uh, iOS uh, 13 and iOS iPad 13 or whatever it's going to be called are on my iPad and iPhone. I have a, a, a TV OS on my on my uh, uh, TV, my two Apple TVs at home. Um, generally speaking, I have found them to be pretty bugless. Um, they should be because they're going to be released next week. So they shouldn't have too many bugs. There have been some peculiar things, and I'll try to cover a couple of them just to give you a heads up. But I think they've been they've been resolved. There's a little thing when you're a, when you're a beta tester, they send you this little feedback assistant guy, and this feedback assistant guy lets you put in issues that you have and send it to them. So they're very responsive on uh, on getting things you know, that you send them and then working on them. So they, they know the, the mass of people who are beta testing. Um, uh, just from like, for a language point of view, Mac OS is Catalina, right? That's the new operating system. Uh, there are gonna be some of you in the room who will not want to upgrade to Catalina soon. And I'll explain why. Uh, TV OS is a no-brainer iOS for iPad and iPhone are no-brainers in my view. Um, no-brainer means you shouldn't have any trouble updating to them and learning what the differences are because the differences are not profound. The differences are not, you know, going from a PC to a Mac or vice versa. They're they're pretty. They're enhancements, not revolutions. In my in my view, I saw nothing here that I needed to say. Oh my God. I don't know how to do that. You know. The hardest one is um, the, what, what do they call it? Tactive. What's the expression, Mitch? Tactic. 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 Tactic is when you touch a device, it now does different things than before. You know, before it was just click it or not click it. Now, if you touch it hard, it does one thing. If you touch it soft, it does something else. If you swipe it, it goes, you know, you have to get a little experience. But that's about the biggest revolution. And the reason is they're trying to take all the other, all the other little um, dollar and a half controls off of these. They want this to become a single smooth shape run by software I'm inferring this, but I think that's where they're headed. Because you'll notice when you do the volume controls that the volume control is now going to be software. And you can just see that it's going to be software. And they're going to take those little toggle switches off the side of this thing. 
Because that's two and a half bucks, right? And if you sell a billion or something and two and a half bucks, it turns into real money. So you can just see how they're how they're moving. That's why they took the headphone jack off and, and all the other things. So just, <coughs> Marty, just, just to clarify what you're saying, the the level button, the level buttons on the side will be replaced by like sliders on the screen. Yeah. I'm inferring. Maybe not on the next phone, but certainly the phone after that. Okay. I you mean, the sliders are already on the screen. But. You can just see it. Yeah, they're already on the screen, but now you're going to see when you when you touch this that it, it actually gives you a little thing on the screen while you're doing it. Okay. Um, there's lots of free information. Mitch is going to cover everything. I'm going to show you how to get educated so you can send him a million questions. For next week, I want him to be prepared. I want, I want him to be, uh, yeah, prepared. prepared. Well, Marty, since you're picking on me, I got a question for you. Go ahead, Mitch. Have you experienced any problems with um, the TV uh, uh, beta? Because every time, the problem I have repeatedly is every time I hit the the uh, voice to say find uh, Clint Eastwood, uh, it blocks the system. I have to unplug it and plug it in. Oh no. no. Not even, on the, not even on generation uh, three. Well, this, is, yeah, this is the latest. Have you been using the you yep. use that voice thing? Yep. I don't understand that. All right, thanks. Yeah. Um, okay, and, and then uh, besides Mitch covering this, we'll cover it obviously in subsequent sessions. But there, we're having classes on all the uh, new operating systems beginning in January. Um, Marilyn is here, so she can give you the skinny and if you have questions make sure you send them to her um, all right just quickly uh, installation is very easy uh, you have to do a time machine backup first everybody get that you have to do a time machine backup or a super duper backup or some kind of backup so that if something bad goes wrong you can recover all right everybody's clear on how to do that if you're not talk to me afterwards or talk to one of us afterwards. You have to do a backup, period, end of story. Don't not do it. You're gonna be tempted to not do it, but don't not do it. Um, the biggest issue with Mac OS is gonna be 64-bit and old 32-bit apps. There are something like 250 apps that will not work that we know are 32-bit apps, and, and that means that you We'll get an error message that says, oh, you can't use these anymore. So if you're in love with a 32-bit app, you should find an alternative and transfer your data before you upgrade. Because once you upgrade, it won't work. Now, there are some technical ways to get around it. I put here for non-expert people. I don't mean that in any derogatory way or anything. It, it does take some work. You can partition your hard drive and you can run your old operating system on part and the new operating system on part. Um, depends how big your hard drives are. Uh, you can do it on an external hard drive and put those apps on an external hard drive, do the same thing. Uh, but just, you know, make sure you know about 32-bit apps. Uh, how do you find out which are 32-bit apps? You go to System Preferences and... Um, uh, sorry, not system preferences, right? You go to the Apple guy, which I can't find here because I moved this. You go to the Apple guy, and about this Mac. And then system report. And software applications am I doing this right application yeah yeah but it's it takes a while to populate the list because it's going to go find all the apps that I have here here you go so system preferences not system preferences yeah. sorry about this Mac and then over here, it will show you that they don't exist in Catalina. Really? So it 
have chosen to you in the old. Oh, here it is, right here. This guy says 32 bit unsupported. See it right there? And that app is the first one, which is unknown. You can organize them. You can organize them. You can organize them. Yeah, you can organize them and do it, but, but the. Um, It'll say here unidentified. On the, on the current operating system, uh, you'll have another column out here that will show you 32 bit or 64 bit. Uh, and we know that the Adobe ones don't work. We know Acrobat Pro doesn't work. Um, I know that the uh, Adobe Photoshops uh, are all 32 bit and unsupported. So here's Photoshop Elements, 32 bit unsupported. Um, the photo. Premiere, Adobe Premiere is unsupported. I just went through this because I had to upgrade them all. Uh, so you find, you find well, it's mostly the Adobe's, but then there are some others that are around. There's 250, 250. How about Microsoft Office, do you know? Uh, uh, Office, I think, has been upgraded because I didn't have any issue with upgrading. All, all depends on which version you're running. If you have both, yeah, that's seven. right. Yeah, if you have version 12. Um, so, so the 32-bit operating, 32-bit uh, apps are an issue. Uh, I haven't found very many bugs. The biggest bug I found was mail. Uh, with uh, when you open mail, it's very peculiar. And if you have a long list of mail, occasionally you will get a blank where there should. Be. You see, all these, all these mails are filled. But occasionally, on my on my uh, home system, I would see a blank instead of a preview. And I wrote to them, and I guess on the latest upgrade, it got fixed because I don't see them anymore. Uh, but that was one that I, that was a little disconcerting because you you shouldn't have blanks when you're scrolling down your mail, right? Um, and uh, let's see what else. Uh, there are two places where you can go for information, and I'd like I put these in the handout. Um, and you were asking me earlier, what are all these, uh, what are all these uh, Apple things for? Each of these Apple things is for a um, place I want to take you. So, for example, this first one takes you to Mac OS Catalina. How did I get there? In, in uh, Apple, If you go to apple.com slash beta, apple.com slash beta, it will then give you each of these things on a little list. You don't have to sign up to be a beta tester. It will just show you what Mac uh, <coughs> OS Catalina is. And then, yeah, this is one of those funny ones, if you, if you just scroll up with your, with your uh, mouse like you normally would, it then takes you to the explanation of what's in Catalina. So you can read about what's in Catalina, how it's changed music, TV, and podcasts into separate apps from what it used to be before, how to present Apple Music, what the Apple TV is going to do, how to listen to podcasts, all, all that information about what Catalina is and whether or not you want to do it. Easy ways to find and share and notes, organizing and starting browsing, so on and so on. So it's a very easy way to get sort of a, an idea of the whole upgrade process. What's it going to do for you? What can you do with a pencil? By the way, you have to buy a new pencil. For those of us who have the old pencil, it doesn't work. They were, they were cheap. They were cheap. They were only 100 bucks. <laughs> I guess it's relative to how much money you have, right? 
So that's one. Then you click on the next one. You get to iOS 13. Same deal here. It looks like it's a whole new look, and then you scroll up, and it makes it look like a phone. And you scroll. Uh, are you are you seeing that the dark mode is the dark mode? You know why they're going to dark mode? Battery. Battery. Battery? Oh. Well, maybe battery, but eyesight. Because there's so much damage that the bright screens do to our eyes, especially at night when we're trying to go to bed. You can have a dark mode and a light mode, and the light mode is what we're used to, and the dark mode makes everything more colorful and the colors pop out at you better, all that kind of stuff. So each one of these places, iOS, the iPad OS, has neat things that you can now, you can now put widgets on the side instead of just having dashboards. You can do all sorts of things and then it again scrolls away. Uh, it's, uh, you can do slide over and split views. And you'll be learning about this as we go on uh, throughout the year. There's a new home screen um, because the new iPads are bigger. They didn't like the fact that this was only 12.9 uh, inches. Uh, sorry for the camera, 12.9 inches. Uh, they had to get rid of the little thing around it so it just goes all the way to the edge. All sorts of stuff like that. So, um, and then the last one is the Apple TV. I'm going to do an Apple TV here. And here's an Apple TV 4K. Cinem cinematic in every sense. You can watch now movies, TVs. And, and the TV app is pretty nice now, actually. Um, you, can, you can actually just ask it, and it will go find whatever you're asking for on any, you know, if you have Netflix or if you have Zoom or, or uh, Z Z what's it called? Zoom. Prime. And, and uh, Prime and all these other, uh, well, we have about 30 because we don't have any cable supplier in our house. Um, so we get all these inputs. All right, my name is Frank. Does it make any sense to go to an Apple TV with 4K if the television does not support 4K? No. no. Not in my view, but eventually you're going to buy a 4K TV, so you want to pay now or pay later. I bought that Fire Stick 4K, it was 30 bucks more, but I figured one of these days I'll convince my wife to buy a new TV, and we're going to buy a 4K TV. And my new Mac is a 5K TV, my new Mac is a 5K uh, display. So I can watch them on my new Mac, which is 27 inches. It's almost as big as my 55. Not quite, but you know, half the size. Depending on how close you are. <laughs> on Apple TV, I know on you know I had a old hockey puck that you could watch stream the events, and then I downloaded the app to my Samsung TV, and I don't seem to see that option anymore. I didn't know if that's available or not. Uh, it is on the Apple TV. Is it available on? I don't know why it's not on the. Is the Samsung app the Apple TV app? It's yeah, it's the Apple TV app on my Samsung TV, but I didn't see that option. Now I haven't looked for it this time, but I, I don't know. It time. might it might be a separate it might be a separate uh, you know in the new Apple TVs you have to have you download each app by itself. Uh -huh. It might be a separate app. Okay. I think it was on the four on version four or whatever mm -hmm. I think the prior one. Are the new uh, software going to be 5G capable? Uh, I don't know that, but I can't imagine they're not. What was the question? question? Are the new are the new uh, phones going to be 5G capable? No. Oh, well, the this information is is not discussion group. This, this generation iPhone will not be 5G. Right. Hmm. We, get, we read that in the discussion group. Yeah, it was from one of the emails I got. It's actually right. a couple of people responded to it. Said that Apple won't have 5G on the current release or the next one. Yeah, why? So because no. the accessibility of 5G, 5G is very limited. They're going to have it tomorrow. They're going to have it the year from now. A lot of dead spaces. I can't imagine that they won't have it. I, I, I saw a report on 5G. <coughs> I could have been 60 minutes or one of the Sunday morning shows that said it was unbelievably fast if you're within like a hundred yards of a tower. 
<laughs> and don't have anything between you and the tower. Okay. Well, what good is that? No, oh, man. The, the internationally, they're going. They're going 5G, and if we don't, we'll just be, you know, one, one more nail in the coffin. There are huge amounts of money on 5G versus low 5G. So if you can expect all kinds of fake information in both directions. So it's, it's very, very hard to say. So, um, I don't know, that was sort of just a, a general, I have the links in here for the sites that I've been showing you. So I would encourage you just, you know, go poke around see what these things are going to do so you get some familiarity with the things. Sure. I understand that the Catalina's uh, Apple has a much more secure and I've read some indications that the applications will be asking you for, for permission to write data. You have to authorize almost every application. Yeah, that is one thing I've noticed that it, you do have to, you do have to tell it you do, you do have to, in system preferences, you do have to give more permissions than we did before. Yeah. When somebody wants to do, when some app wants to do something, you have to tell it that it can do it. But it's not, I, I haven't found it burdensome oh, okay. to, to do things, you know. And, it's and just I, security. I, I, I also read that the, your hard drive, whether it's hard drive or not, will now be partitioned and the operating system will be totally in a separate partition than all of your files. Did it, it, it take any particular longer time to load Catalina? No, it's it's much faster. To, to me, it's much faster than so it was before to 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 load when you're restarting. No, I'm, I'm at the install process. The install. No, the install was not, okay. I mean, you know, it's a gigabyte of, or a terabyte of stuff or whatever. This is. This is a terabyte, and I think I did it in maybe an hour. Okay. My two terabyte new computer took um, longer, but not inordinately. So okay. you know, it wasn't days to do anything. No, I didn't see anything like that. Uh, the, the system preferences, things are a little bit different. Uh, there's a lot more reliance on your Apple ID for <coughs> security and for sign-in. I think they're going to the one sign-in approach that Microsoft has used for years. Uh, Microsoft, if you have a if you have a sign-in that's a Hotmail account or a Live account or whatever, you can use that everywhere in the store and on different devices and for access to things. Um, and, and I think Apple has finally done that here because now everything that you want to do uses your Apple ID uh, for for credentialing. So I find that a pretty good, pretty good uh, enhancement. Marty? Sure. I think you were going to say something about this. I would suggest that anybody that feels the least uncomfortable about jumping into Catalina pretty much wait for the classes in January okay. before you do anything. Also, if you happen to be lucky enough to have more than one Apple computer, uh, certainly leave the second Apple computer on the current operating system. So you can deal with these 32-bit uh, apps and, and it'll be a gradual experience. But uh, I, I really believe that we'll have as many as 80 people in each of our Catalina classes and I mean, these are the type of years that uh, we look forward to because uh, there are some major, major, major issues that you're going to be dealing with. And if anybody feels the least uncomfortable, please wait until those classes in January. And now, as far as the iOS, you seem to think that's not a no issue. Not no issue, just it's not. Uh to me, it wasn't a major leap forward. I'll, I'll try and get you. There was a question earlier that I deferred to oh, maps. So, um, uh, come on, screen here. Maybe not. I had to do it here. So 
but neither of these devices is going to let me screen mirror. So I can't answer your question. And you've got the reflector on? Hold on. So um, this is my um, my iPhone. I don't see that. Uh, Don's question was about maps, and somewhere here I have maps. And your question was if I have a route and I want to see a piece of the route, right? So all I did here, just, I'm, I did this quickly. Here's the Apple Maps app, right? Now, I don't particularly like the Maps app. I like Waze better, so I use Waze, but I have Map, Apple Map here, so I'll use that. Uh, the question was, if I want to see a piece of the route, but I don't want to activate it and send and say go so that I start getting directions and having to talk to me, how do I do that? Um, there was a thing, here it is, that um, shows me each of my directions, right? So if I touch one of those, now, now I just made this go home, right? So if I touch one of these, it shows me what this route is and I can make that route bigger, right? So it shows me the in individual piece of the route to take me home. And then if I want to see the next one, I can simply, I can simply go to the next one and see an individual piece of the route, and it shows me each one without activating it. So all I'm doing is expanding it and touching it, and it shows me my detail, right? And then when I'm done, I just say done, and I get the whole route back. Once you activated one, can you still look at the other two? Once you activated what, Bob? Sorry. Once you activated one of the three, can you still look at the other two? Oh, sure. Yeah, because I can look at this one. I can do done. I can look at the next one. Scroll up and back. You know, whichever, wherever piece I'm, whatever piece I'm doing. Right. has the voice on. Getting the voice on is hardest for me because I usually leave my phone in mute and then I'm wondering why it doesn't talk to me. So a piece of advice for those of you who are recording this uh, or listening to this, um, turn off the mute. Turn off that little white, uh, that little red line that don't talk to you. Um, some, uh, some other things, let me see if I can show you a piece of this tactic that I was talking about. Um, it used to be when you had apps. Uh, now, Taptic is the touch control that's built into the new into the new uh, operating system. So, it used to be that if I touched Maps, I would get it to wiggle like this, right? And then I would touch Done, and it would be done. But now, watch what happens if I just touch it. Uh, sorry, I went too far. If I just touch one of these a little bit, I get, can I do a new message? I can't do all I New message, search, VIP, other, other stuff like that, right? And if I then said, if I, if I said I want a new message, um, here's Apple and an AT&T TV. If I touch that, I can share AT&T TV or I can rearrange the apps. And if I want to rearrange the apps, then it starts shaking. So this tactic stuff is a little bit, um, takes a little bit of learning, you know. So here's music, I want to share my music, I want to rearrange the apps, I want to search, or I want to play my last one. And all I did there was I touched the, the Amazon music uh, lightly, but not lightly enough to make it wiggle. 
if I hold it in, then it starts wiggling, and then I can move it or delete it or what I'm used to. So this taptic stuff is, uh, takes a little bit of uh, learning. Because otherwise you start making copies of things and sharing things, and then you don't know what the heck you're doing. And done is always and still in the upper right hand corner, so that works, that's fine. Um, what else is new that I have discovered? That was the biggest one. Um, I don't know how many of you know about this guy. You know what this ear means on the control, control center? Yeah, that ear thing, if you had a headphone on, it amplifies the sound that the phone picks up. So what I've been using it for is I put this near the TV speaker, you know, my Sonos speakers are up there at the front, and then I put my little iPad, I, AirPods in, and because I touch that little ear thing, it enhances the sound that comes into my phone and it acts like sort of a pseudo hearing aid. It enhances that sound that you pick up. And I think there was somebody, somebody that already has been putting his phone up here doing that, using that uh, a little app. So that's a, that's a new little thing. And this is what I meant about, about uh, the sound. If you, if you change the sound here, you can see that the sound bar is moving on the screen, right? All I'm doing is moving the levers on the side, right? The little toggle, the little, uh, what do you call them? Right, the rocker switches, right? So if I move that, it goes up and down. And you can just see that they're prepping us on the next version, because as I do this, you see that it comes up on the screen there. So you can just see that the next version, or one of these versions of phones that is going to happen, is not going to have these block rocker switches anymore. It's going to be another one of these guys here, and they're just going to prep us for getting rid of that. 250 of cost. Can you move it up and down now? Yeah, um, sure. With yeah. my fingers. Yeah. Right. Sure. So they don't need these anymore, right? Because they've already trained <coughs> us to do that, to get volume. So what do I need that for? Mm -hmm. They've already trained us for the for the locking the screen so it doesn't move when I do this, right? That's what this switch is for. Mm -hmm. So they took that off. That used to be another one of those things, right? So they took that off. So they're training us. They're training us to get rid of these switches. You know, they're coming. Just know they're coming. Well, the younger people, I think, totally prefer a phone without all those uh, sure. things on the side. No doubt. Uh, the dark mode is, uh, is uh, on your... Uh, display brightness so then you pick light mode that's our regular and here's dark mode that's only on the new version right this is the new this is ios 13 right this is not on your current um, and then you can make it automatic uh, for a function of time night shift is still the same as it used to be so that's still do here. they automatically update that to the new version automatically? Mm, no, well, it depends how your phone is set. Your phone might be set for automatic updates. Because I got a message this morning that said that my phone was updated. No, that's just for, that's just for 12.6. Um, so it's a security thing. It said something about iOS, so that's why. Yeah, but oh, I, okay. this is iOS. Okay. iOS 13 is not out yet for, for Oh, okay. I just want to make sure. But for a major, for a major update, when you go to like 12 or 13, <coughs> don't you have to make that decision on your own? Or will it automatically do it? Uh, no, I think it depends on how you have your phone set up. I, think you have right. I don't know that. I don't, I don't think, I don't think it has automatic to do with iOS. Uh, upgrade. Uh, an update, yes, but an upgrade, no. So it won't automatically. I guess if you are if you go to general software update, if it says automatic updates on, 
it might take you to 13. I, I think that's for their apps update. That's update, not upgrade. Well, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Probably Sorry. The upgrade is. is. I, think, I think update means update. All right, so any, any other questions before we break for the day? Marilyn, did you want no, to say anything about this, courses? These people had questions about photos. Oh, I beg your pardon. I, I missed all those photo questions. What? You can't let me do that. All right, let's go back. Let me go back here. Sorry, I thought I missed the fact that you no, 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 no. You're absolutely right. I, I did. I'm oh, just completely saw. brain dead. I'm just completely. <laughs> That's the first one. Come on, give me a break. All right, so um, in maps, I attempted to delete summer meetings, blah, blah, blah. I got to do this. Overview of new bonus things. Where did I put all those questions? Right, right here. Huh? Right there. Huh? Yeah. <coughs> you did it up top. I did it up here. Yeah. Because it, it was keep four, going. five, six, seven. Right. No, keep going. There you go. Oh, yeah. Right here. there. Okay. Here. Is there an easy way to join photo libraries? Two. Um, no. Okay. But it can be done. It can be done? I'm not aware it can be done because I just spent months moving pictures around. There, oh. <laughs> there is a uh, software program. Oh, external. Okay. That you can merge and urge and everything with. There, there used to be one called iPhoto Library Manager, but that was for iPhoto. I don't know about Yeah, that. it was, and, and the same developer developed one for photos. For photos, okay. So, so the, the, the easy answer is what he just said. The, the other answer, and one that I like better, is not to put your photos in the photo library. If you keep your photos in a folder externally, if I put my photos in the photo library, then all I wind up with is a photo library that looks like this guy, right? But if I make a folder of pictures, you know, however I want to organize them, and I tell photos, don't import to photos. Well, I mean, in photos, you don't have to, what's new in photos, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. here are our photos, but in photos, in photos preferences, this, this green line is going to drive me crazy all day long, in photos, you do not have to import, see where it says here is, so I'm in photo system, uh, photos preferences general. It says copy items to photo library. I don't have to do that. I can simply have it look where the photos are and remember that they're there. Photos behaves the same way, but then I can have all my library and I can do whatever I want with them very easily and find them. And that's what I've done. I've taken all my photos out of photos, out of the photo library, and I have them all out here now. <clears throat> and then I can have my wife just have the picture she wants, and I can have mine, and I can have other re other li libraries. And those photo libraries, then when you want to change it, you just tell it, make a new photo library with this different collection. Am I making sense to you? Yes, I understand what you're saying. So you don't have to copy to the photo library, and then it makes handling your pictures much easier. Because the photo library, photos library is a pain in the butt. So are you just turn that copy the library off when you import Can you copy the library? You can, you can copy the library, but you can't import it to anything. You can't import from one photo library to another photo library, to my knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm looking at Marilyn, because usually. I'm going to, uh, I'll send out know today, if I remember, and I hopefully I will, about the program that you can use that will accomplish moving photos from one library to another. You would just have to take them out of the library and then put them in a different library. 
Yeah, you can export. Right? You can export a whole thousand pictures. Drag them out, yeah. And then but import. There is a piece of software that makes it a very simple process. What's confusing is that Photos Library is just like the default main library. And you can have other libraries, but then you have to go in and pull them up right. uh, as a separate library. Yeah, what, I, what I'm proposing is, is when you open Photos, you hold the option key. change your default library or your, I forget what it's called. It's called the system library. System library, yeah. Uh, you can change those in, if you want, but then the other library becomes a non-system library. You can only have one system library. Right. Apple encourages you to really use only one library because of the system library right. issue. But I know in my case, I use my different projects. You know, one, one, the center guy has its own library, the uh, temple has its own library, my family in Chicago has their own library, and I think a lot of the libraries. Okay, How do you check the which is your uh, system library? What? How do you check which is your system library? I do the option. Whichever library you're in is your system library unless it tells you you're not. But if you have multiple computers, where do your photos go from your phone? They go Into your system, system library. Only, well, if photo stream is on and you're linking, it does. Otherwise, they stay on your phone. Well, not, you know, not just whether you, you're checking the share on each device. Right. Right. Yeah. If I, if I have, the way I get my things from here to here is I turn photo stream on and I tell the computer photos to, when it sees photo stream, to add them to my library automatically. It adds them to my library automatically. Marty, you can have photo stream off and do the same stuff. With the, uh, if I cloud library. So. Yes. All right, so uh, how to export a photo from a MacBook to an iPad. Easy, AirDrop. AirDrop. Everybody know how to do AirDrop? So I know. Okay, so let's pick a picture. I'm going to go to Photos here. Oops. My, my photo is open. I'm going to pick a picture. And I'm going to right click it and I'm going to say Share. And when I say share, I go over here where it says AirDrop. And anybody in the room who has AirDrop open on their phone or their iPad or their Mac will appear on this little list. So my iPhone is right here, and it just went away for some reason because I blocked it. So Marty's iPhone is here, George's MacBook is here, Carl's iPad is here. Anybody who has AirDrop open on their device can receive this picture if I click it. Now, how do you turn AirDrop on? On your, on your device, um, oh, sorry. On my iPhone, I will turn it on here so you can see what I'm doing. On my iPhone, No, right click is on the computer. Right click is on the computer, right? That's just to get AirDrop open. You can do this with any device, any any app, applet, uh, any 
picture, attachment, app, it doesn't matter. You can, whatever you can say, wherever you see share, right? So now this guy is my uh, antenna. And when I touch, and Bluetooth has to be on, by the way. I touch this red, the green guy. And down here, you'll see airdrop everyone. We're still trying to right click off this computer. Two fingers on your trackpad. Ah, that's not doing control, control, it. Control click on your computer. You have to have two fingers set up in system preferences. All right, so I touched the little green guy first, and then down here it says airdrop. And when I have a choice, I have a choice of airdrop. I can do contacts only or turn the receiver off. And it's just a receiver, right? It's just a receiver. So in my case, I have everyone because I use this for demonstration a lot, right? And that's how I turn airdrop on my computer, on my iPhone. Now I have to get out of here in order for you to see what happens. Let me see if I can do this. Ah, so good. And so they transfer by Bluetooth, not not by being on the same network. No, it's it's you need both for uh, sit for it to. Uh, they both they both have to be on the same Wi-Fi network. For your account? No, oh, no, no. Actually, I've done it. No, I've done it uh, outside. At, uh, in an yeah, they, they don't have to be on the same network, but they both have to have Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Yeah. They both right. have to have Bluetooth. And there's one other thing they have to have. So but they don't have to be on Wi Fi. So let me finish this demonstration, please. On my iPad, which is on the right side of your screen, I have selected this picture. On my iPhone, which is on the left side of the screen, I'm going to receive the picture. Now I have AirDrop turned on on both devices, right? So I'm going to share this guy by using this little uh, box with the arrow. I say share, and down here it says AirDrop. And it shows me all the people in the room who have AirDrop on, George, RF, iPhone, Charlie, Carl, and my iPhone. So I'm going to touch my iPhone on the iPad, right? I'm going to touch over there where it says, oh, you can't see it. Well, I have this nice display of all the people who have an iPad. And you didn't have me, is that correct? I, uh, I have RF, is that, I have Robert's iPad. Okay. Is that you? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to touch you and it says waiting, waiting, waiting. Okay. And you're going to say accept. And I'm going to touch my phone just so that you can all see it. What does it say waiting? Well, it says waiting here. It, for, it doesn't appear there. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm all right. It, right. So now I have said send it, and it automatically got transferred to my phone simply by going from airdrop from one to the other. Airdropping is the best way to get stuff from one place to another. You can do this with 200 pictures. You can do this with pictures. You can do this with video. You can do this with apps. You can do this with music. Anything that you can put the share button next to, you can share. And you can do it from your Mac to your iPad to your iPhone. You can't do it to a PC. So if you're thinking PC, forget it. But you can do it airdropping across your devices. I had trouble airdropping a bunch of pictures one time and breaking into smaller groups. Sometimes, sometimes it won't work if you have different kinds of things together. Okay. But I've had no trouble. I I'll, I transfer a lot from from my my Mac to my to this machine and vice versa. Oh, no I'm trouble. No trouble at all. I have just sent out the uh, website. Everybody in the discussion group on how to move your photos, the software to move your photos from one library to another. Uh, Marty? 
Tell me your name again. Mine? Yeah. Jan. Jan? Yes. Jan wanted to know. No, don't even go there. Yeah. No, she well, wanted. Well, I'm, I'm going to make a suggestion to you, Jan. I'm coming Monday. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, Marty will be here Monday. He can show you. Um, Lots. I'll be here Monday. Right. It's okay. Um, how to take a photo project and put it on a DVD. Oh, I think she's got Lady Rose over here. Um, you know, hardly anybody puts things on DVDs anymore because you can put them on, you can make a photo project, you can put them on Google Drive, you can put them on iCloud Drive and share it, you can put them in iPhone, in photos, uh, share albums and share them. So my recommendation is don't spend the money on the DVDs or the DVD writer, put them in the cloud and then transmit them down. You can make a little video and put them on YouTube. Uh, there's a whole bunch of ways to do it without, um, you know, getting bogged down. And moving pho photos from your iPad to your iPhone, I think we answered that, right? You just airdrop them, easiest way. And I thank you all very much. I know